when our children were in primary school and I would ask their teachers about the music lessons they would teach to our children, there were always teachers who would tell me they wouldn't because music teaching was not really their cup of tea or they couldn't sing or they were just not musical. I'm a, um, I have been a teacher trainer for many years teaching future teachers about how they can teach music to uh, children in primary school. And whenever I asked my students, pre-service teachers, about how they felt about teaching music to children themselves, there were always students who would tell me they rather wouldn't. Because, again, music teaching was not really their cup of tea. They couldn't sing or they were just not musical. What they really meant was that they didn't have uh, private music lessons or didn't have learned to play a musical instrument. And they compared their singing to that of Adele or Beyonce, professional singers. And most of all, they expressed their lack of confidence. In schools all over the world, there are children who do not have music lessons because their teachers do not feel confident in teaching music. When I asked my students in teacher training, those who would rather not teach music, about their lack of confidence and the reasons for that, there were always students who would tell me they just didn't have music lessons when they were in primary school themselves. Or that when they were in uh, practice or in, in, in teacher practice, field practice in a primary school, that their mentors didn't teach music either. So why should they? We are in a loop of teachers not teaching music because their teachers are not teaching music or we're not teaching music. Imagine that we do nothing to break this loop and this loop turns into a downward spiral because fewer and fewer and fewer children have music lessons. Imagine what you will hear in our future schools. It will be the sound of silence. And I'm really worried about that. I'm worried because research has already shown that music education can have great impact on the development and future lives of our children in many ways and through them on our society. Of course, music education can um, it be important for those who want to learn about music, who want to enjoy music as a hobby or who want to make a career out of it. But music education can also uh, benefit a child's social development and their health and their well-being. And that's important for all, isn't it? And music education can also develop the listening skills that are fundamental for learning language. Fundamental for learning language. That's not only important, that's even crucial for children who struggle with reading and writing. What we need is that our teachers get their confidence back so that our children can benefit from their music lessons. So that's what we need. In my research, we try to accomplish that by um, using interaction technology in teacher training. Interaction technology as in uh, apps, websites, games, uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, even robots. Technology that we can interact with and that responds to what we do and that we can respond to in return. But can interaction technology really make a difference in teacher training? Well, I think it can. Um, 
can it really make a difference in teacher training? <coughs> um, well, I know, because I've been there, that teacher trainers face different challenges. And I know that they really work hard and do their utmost to prepare pre-service teachers for teaching music with children. And I know they also use interaction technology for that. Uh, websites with ready-made music lessons, or apps so that their children can uh, make music on their own. But apparently, that is not enough for teachers to feel confident. We need to do something differently. We need to do something smarter. And if we want to use interaction technology, we should use the interaction technology smart. Use it to solve the challenges that teacher trainers face on a daily basis. Because we know that the backgrounds of pre-service teachers differ quite a lot. Some already play a musical instrument, others don't. Some already have experience in teaching music, others don't. And it is these differences in backgrounds that make it really hard for teacher trainers to sufficiently guide each individual, each of the 20 to 30 pre-service teachers individually uh, in the limited amount of time. It's impossible to do. So we should do it differently. And my assumption is that using interaction technology in teacher training can make the difference if we use the technology to overcome these kinds of challenges. For example, by supporting the teacher trainers in their guidance of each individual student, or by creating more opportunities for students to practice their skills without extra time needed in the curriculum, without the need for the teacher trainer to always be there in person. But what interaction technology should we then use? And what should we use it for? And how should we implement it in a smart way? To answer these important questions, in my research, we design and build examples of interaction technology, prototypes that we can test and evaluate in the field, in practice, and we explore how this can help uh, create more opportunities for students to practice skills they need, and uh, how this can uh, make teacher training as a whole more efficient and effective. Imagine, you are the teacher of a class of 20 to 30 children in primary school playing enthusiastically on their musical instrument. And I mean enthusiastically. And you must determine what is really going on musically. Who is playing the correct rhythm, who doesn't? Who is playing uh, too slow, too fast, too loud, too quiet? And then determine or decide in a split second how to act on this? That's really difficult. That's really challenging. And students must learn quite some skills. And the learning of skills is all about doing things over and over and over again until you master it. Currently, such skills are typically trained by practicing music teaching as if it were for real. One student in the role of the teacher in front of the other students in their roles of uh, children playing music. But how efficient is this really? <coughs> students learn more when they are actively involved in the learning, when they actively participate in the learning. But are they? Because there's usually not enough time for all students in the group to stand in front of the group, and for all students in the group to have a turn in giving feedback. And the feedback is usually given only after the student in front of the group has finished teaching. So uh, the students in the group cannot immediately give feedback on what they see. And the student in front of the group cannot adjust the teaching while they are teaching. And what about the focus of the students in the group? Is it really 
on the teaching to be learned, on the skills to be learned? Or is it also, or mostly, or only focused on their own music playing? And now imagine that we use interaction technology. And each individual student would be able to practice specific music teaching skills at their own pace, in their own time, at their own convenience, in a virtual classroom. With virtual children playing virtual instruments, without the need for the teacher trainer to be there in person at any time. That could save time. And students would be able to practice these specific music skills over and over and over again until they master it. Or, without a virtual classroom, um, imagine that we involve all the students in a group in giving feedback, focused on the teaching to be learned, on the skills to be learned at any time of the lesson, in real time. That could be more efficient, yes. But we don't know that. We don't know that yet. And that is why we have developed interaction technology in the form of a web app that makes it possible for students in the group to give feedback in real time via the teacher trainer to the student in front of the group. The app makes it also possible for the teacher trainer to have an overview of all the feedback given. And makes it possible for the teacher trainer to direct the focus of the students to the teaching to be learned, to the skills to be learned. Uh, we are currently testing this app in different teacher training institutions. And um, we test whether this or how this actually uh, could work and how this can make teacher training more efficient and effective. And from what we have seen so far, from designing, uh, building, testing, evaluating, different kinds of prototypes of interaction technology, aimed at different aspects of music teaching, I believe that using interaction technology in teacher training can help the teacher trainer to overcome their challenges, and will help the students, all students, to learn what they need to learn more effectively and efficiently. And ultima ultimately, that uh, uh, the technology will uh, help these students to learn the music teaching and feel confident in teaching music to children. So they will actually teach music to children. And now imagine that all children have music lessons in their schools. And all children will benefit from the impact that music education can have on their development and future lives, in many ways. Those who will be teachers will teach to their students, and of those students, those who will be teachers will teach to their students, and so on. We will no longer be in a downward spiral, we will be in the loop that we need to be in. In a loop in which teachers teach music because their teachers were teaching music to them. Imagine what you then will hear in our schools. Not the sound of silence, but the sound of music. Yeah. <laughs>